Yo, what up guys? So in today's video, what I want to do is show you how to basically post exploit machines or what to do after actually exploiting devices. In the last video, I showed you how to hack into Windows 7 and how to hack into Windows Server 2012. Now, this exploit MS17 Eternal Blue was, will basically work within Windows 8.1, Windows Server 2012, Windows 7 and any anything sort of later than that. Uh, Windows XP will work uh, as well. Because they're the actual devices that are vulnerable to this type of attack or exploit. Right, so basically uh, what we need to do for this type of, um, for this video is a massive console. And what we need to do is be already connected to the interpreter. If you don't know how to use Metasploit, make sure to check my video, uh, my vid previous video, which I've posted today, yesterday, yesterday and I think it was Saturday. I can't, uh, sorry, no, it was Friday, I think. Right, I can't remember, sorry. So to make make sure to check these videos out and I'm going to show you what to do now. So we're in the interpreter. What you to do is write help, <clears throat> right? And as you can see, we get a file of what we can actually do within the computer system. Now, these are the com core commands. They're not really important unless you want to get some uh, for um, further information about the uh, computer system or if you want to like terminate the session. Let's go bottom uh, file. Now this allows you to basically download, upload, edit files, change files, edit directories, then remove directories, remove files, basically everything that you could do within a computer system. Networking commands, this is basically if you want to exploit further. If you want to exploit further devices or get information about a specific device, for example, you might, for example, you can run Netstat and you can see some server servers. For example, if this server is connected to a server, it will have an IP address, and you can exploit further to the server and then take over uh, the network. System commands. Um, this is just the basics as well, like CMD files, so you can kill sessions. You can reboot, you can shell, which is actually a good command. I'll show you in a second. Shutdown, you can steal tokens, sysinfo, and user interface commands. Now, this is the basically the fun stuff. I'll show you in a second what it does. Uh, record, you can record microphone. You can record a uh, webcam chat. Uh, this is basically, you actually, you can actually take stream and you can actually just take a snapshot, a screenshot. Now what you can actually do is actually web stream the webcam. I'll show you how it works, but with a desktop because you can spam people and you can take a snapshot, which is just a screenshot of your computer, of your webcam. You can play a file if you have it on yeah, any of your Kali Linux system. Uh, get system, that's just basically, I'm pretty sure that uh, elevates privileges of your, of your actual, you know, exploitation to the root. I'm not sure what it does exactly. I've not tested it. Actually, I'll check in a second with this. Hash dump, uh, you don't want to avoid this. The reason is because if you write hash dump, and if you know what a SAM database is, SAM database is basically the credentials of your computer system. So basically it has logins, password, and uh, administrator accounts, and basically all accounts within the computer system, they're local. So if you, if you dump the contents of the SAM database, you might break the computer, which therefore you might have to reinstall the virtual machine. Timestamp, I'm not really sure what this does. Um, I think it just creates a timestamp, I'm not sure though. Let's try and get system what it does. I'm not actually check what it does. Let's get, get system. Already running system, um, never mind then. Okay, I'll show you some cool commands. So the first thing command I want to show you is actually background. Now background, what it does basically, sort of allows you to exploit further or allows you back into the Metasploit console without closing the session. If you want to get back into the session, make sure just to write sessions one and you're back into the session. If you want to access the computer shell, what you do is shell and you're back into, you're basically in the administrator shell terminal. Right. And you can actually do stuff here. So basically what we can do is net user. And as you can see, there's also because I've been recording this for the third time now because I've made some mistakes. Um, Griffin hacked and hackerino. What we can do actually is um, net user hacked delete. 
and let me just maybe I'll put the wrong command. So net user hacked delete. And as you can see, if you go net user, it actually deleted the folder, the the, the user. But we we can do the same thing with net user uh, hacker email, and we can actually delete it, or we can newly create a new one. For example, we can net user hacked one two three and just add, and that therefore it creates another user. Obviously. When you create users, you need to be careful because you can get caught because it actually shows you. In a second, I'm going to show you everything, the, the after effects of the system. And there's some other stuff we can, oh, sorry, this is just actual, you know, this actual file of the um, shell. What we can do is actually, if you go to desktop, can I go desktop, cd, I think I need to go into Griffin, so actually ls dir, what this was here. Fuck's sake. Uh, I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, Griffin. There we go. And the IR, MKDIR, sorry, desktop. Uh, MKDI hacked. And we can also create new files as well. And I'm sure it just creates, as you can see, uh, we're inside the folder. We can actually do stuff within the folder as well. We can up to, up, uh, upload files, we can make files, whatever you want, to be honest. Now, how to get back to it? So you do Control C and you just press Y. Y is actually not going to uh, shut the session yet. It's just going to get you of the shell. Now, there's also another stuff. What we can actually do is I'll show you. So what we need to do now is PS, process list. And we need to do, what we need to do is look for one thing. We need to look for an explorer. It should be down there at the bottom or at the top. As you can see, we have explorer. So what we need to do is migrate 1976. And it may take a second, it might do a pop-up. As you can see, migration completed successfully. Now what we can do is key scan start. And as you can see, starting the keystroke sniffer. Now if I go to my Windows 7, Actually, I will show you. Um, let me just switch. Should, yep. So, for example, I will, I will launch Notepad. As you can see, I also created a file here. Um, let me just. For example, let's type some passwords in. And I will put. Um, my login is John. My password is Do. And my credit card details is one two three zero seven eight. And my date of birth is 15th of July 1950, for example, right? Save it, save it on the desktop or don't save it at all. Let's go back to Kali. Uh, what we can do now is keystroke, keyscan, sorry, keyscan dump. And as you can see, caps lock J, lock on, caps lock D, or lock O and one to three and whatever, right? That's basically, and obviously if you leave this for a long time, you leave this for about maybe, let's say three hours, you can get some interesting stuff. Now, this is not yet, this is not finished. That's why I love um, Mirror's Play Console. It's my favorite tool, by the way. So what we can also do, is sample we can do screenshot, and we can do screenshots basically anytime you want. And what we can also do one more favorite thing, which is my favorite thing. We can actually spy on people and it's live as well. It shows you the time. Now this time is wrong a bit. It's about five hours late. But it's okay. Um But you can actually spy on people. There's nothing that you can really do because this is basically just like a it's like a video streaming on the actual browser. But still it's cool because you can watch people, you can actually say stuff, you can do screenshots, you can keylog stuff. And there's a lot of stuff you can do. Right? So that's to be honest about this for the video. Now, how do you actually, now I'll show you one thing because yes, you might um, run this, but you need to remember that you can also get caught. Now, this is how you actually can get caught. As you can see, there's the folder. And what you can happen is there's the, as, as you can see, I will forget to switch the screen again, TCP, and there's also a different IP address and a different IP address. This is my IP address. This is the Kali. This is a different port, different port established, which means there's something wrong. You can actually do this on your computer and you can check IP addresses if you've maybe been hacked yourself or you've been watched by someone. 
So basically, um, this is how you also get caught, or what example can happen is if you go to your computer local disk users, as you can see, there's folders. If there's only you and you've not created any other accounts, there should be one folder, right? Or what you can also do is log out. Obviously, when you turn your computer on, and instead of having one folder, you have two folders, then you've been hacked. There's a problem. I'll show you. As you can see, there's a Griffin hacked and Hackerino. Um, that should... Oh, it does work, actually. So as you can see, you can get caught very, very easily if you're not careful. Um, obviously, don't hack anybody. Don't hack anybody you're not supposed to. Hack yourself. Use a virtual machine. As you can see... I will show you the interpreter. As you can see, the session died now. However, you can restore it. All you do is just exploit. It might take a second. Actually run it. Or what you might have to do is actually uh, close Mera's play console and run the exploit again. Nope. Should work. Take a second, because I locked out. Therefore, I'm not basically able to exploit further. Let me just wait. It might take a second, as you know, because Windows 7 is very, very old, it might take a second um, to actually run. Or it might not run at all. Anyways, um, let's see if this runs. So in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you can leave a like, leave a comment, um, whatever you want, to be honest. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to hit me in the comments. And what I might do is create a Discord server for you guys too. As you can see, it says fail, but that's fine. It might run again. I might actually create a Discord server for you guys to answer any questions or help you guys out. Oh, as you can see, it worked because it says sending stage, which means it's, yep, as you can see, it worked. Um, you can do this background and you can actually run sessions. As you can see, this is the second session and you can actually change the names as well. I don't remember the command exactly. So hope you've enjoyed the content and see you in the next video.